In your headlines, last night's tragedy leaves one Provo family stricken with grief. TCI government says it will soon be announcing interventions in related to economic impacts. And Operation Rejuvenation has officially commenced for District ED7. From the PTV Broadcasting Headquarters in Providencial is your number one source for news. I'm Erica Pinales, delivering the latest from across the country this Monday, March 7th, 2022, right to your door. News Watch starts now. Another tragedy leaves one Provo family stricken with grief and the Immigration Department in deep mourning after a car accident on Leeward Highway claims the life of a beautiful young woman. Here's that report. The family of Donisha Capron is stricken with grief today after losing the beautiful and promising young woman in a horrific traffic accident Sunday night. Newswatch received word of the accident a little after 9.30 p.m. with this video showing a sedan almost completely wrapped around an advertisement pole in the median near the Caribbean place toward the first Caribbean roundabout. The poll today shows minimal damages, while the car's passenger side was completely crushed and the driver's side barely there. We're told that the young woman was trapped inside of the car, which proved to be a difficult feat for firefighters and EMS officials trying to free her from the vehicle. She was pronounced dead on the scene. It is believed that she was the only occupant in the vehicle at the time of the accident. While police are in the process of investigating the cause of the crash, it is believed that speed may have been a factor. We learned that Donisha was an only child and an only daughter. She was employed at the Department of Immigration for a number of years, and her co-workers and other family members have begun to express their disbelief over her tragic passing. Sources tell Newswatch that the scene of the accident was heartbreaking as persons stood comforting one another in shock and total disbelief of her passing, some completely inconsolable. Her body was transported to the morgue after 11 p.m. where persons said emotions ran high yet again. She was 26 years old. Just two weeks ago, another car crashed into a power pole on the Leeward Highway and moments later caught fire. It took police and firefighters hours to extinguish the blaze. Luckily, no one was seriously injured. Capron is the country's second road traffic fatality for 2022, having recorded the first out of North Caicos. 21-year-old Aldrico Hall, who died a week after being flown to Jamaica due to his extensive injuries. He was the passenger in a vehicle accident on Whitby Road. The Ministry of Tourism is currently hosting representatives from the UK government's Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs to discuss Darwin Plus environment funding for local projects. Details in this report. From March 2nd to the 11th, the Ministry of Tourism will be hosting representatives from the UK government's Department for Environment, Food and Rural Affairs. The main purpose of the visit is to meet with local stakeholders to discuss Darwin Plus which is environmental funding for the UK Overseas Territories. Darwin Plus provides funding for 14 UK Overseas Territories environmental projects, as well as fellowships for nationals of these territories to bolster technical and scientific expertise and broaden knowledge and experience of environmental projects. While here, the DEFRA representatives will engage with the ministry to determine how well the Darwin Fund is fulfilling its purpose and whether it is required to make necessary adjustments to the program to better serve overseas territories and United Kingdom. DEFRA is the UK agency responsible for funding and ultimately deciding what is funding through the Darwin Plus program. Darwin Plus has funded applied conservation work on Caicos Spine. Turks and Caicos rock iguanas, wetlands, coral reefs, and other species and habitats. It has also developed capacity in management tools such as marine spatial planning, natural capital accounting, and fishery science in the TCI. Honorable Minister Josephine Connolly, speaking to the visit on Friday, said the TCI has benefited enormously from Darwin Plus grants, some of which have helped save species and habitats from extinction and have further protected the livelihoods of islanders. She notes that Darwin Plus has helped the country balance the needs of the economy 
with those of nature and the environmental security of future generations. The visit will bring together both conservation management staff and the on-the-ground conservation team members in the DECR with the UK Funding Department to assess the efficacy of funding, how best to address environmental challenges and how the funds are accessed. The visit will also give the TCI the opportunity to show how successful past grants have been and to identify adjustments that will be helpful in future conservation management to ensure that the natural environment is adequately protected for future generations. For PTV News Watch, I am Delana Isles. Don't go anywhere, more News Watch when we return. This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza Providenciales, Midis Plaza North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotiabank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Welcome back to Newswatch. The Minister of Health and Human Services, the Honorable Jamel Robinson, visited Salt Key on March 4th, 2022. Take a look. During his official visit, Honorable Robinson's first stop was the primary health care clinic where he met with his health team, followed by a sit down with District Commissioner Mistress Almeida Wilson. The health minister had an opportunity to walk on the temporarily constructed bridge before engaging in a full driving tour of the island with D.C. Wilson. Later in the day, Honorable Robinson noted and was reportedly pleased with works being done under the government's COVID Works program to enhance the beauty of our environment. This program ensures that able-bodied individuals on the tiny island are gainfully employed and that there are economic opportunities for our people. Minister Robinson promised to address any outstanding matters under his portfolio responsibility, including upgrades to the clinic, completion of the Environmental Health Department building, and the fencing of the landfill site. According to the Minister of Health, his stay was much too short and promised Salki residents that he would indeed be back. The TCI government says it will soon be announcing interventions in relation to economic impacts resulting from the Ukrainian crisis. More in this report. Already gas prices around the world have risen and will no doubt keep rising as the Russian invasion of Ukraine continues. Last weekend, Premier Washington Music said that the Turks and Caicos Islands will no doubt also be affected in this and other ways. He has also expressed his government's sympathies with the plight of the Ukrainian people and that the TCI is in solidarity with the heads of state of CARICOM and the international community in denouncing these actions as Russia continues its assault and as the situation evolves into a humanitarian crisis. The Premier states that these islands will no doubt be impacted by the rise in energy prices, which can have a trickle-down effect on the prices of food, commodities, goods and services. The government, he adds, is deeply concerned about this turn of events and in response will need to intervene to lessen the negative impacts on residents of the TCI. He assures that he and his cabinet are considering a number of measures to alleviate the burdens of households and small businesses in this environment. Residents can expect to hear more from the Premier on this on Wednesday following the cabinet meeting. Meanwhile, U.S. and international media are reporting that the war could be a global economic game-changer. The Washington Post reports today that the fallout from the fighting in Ukraine will take a meaningful bite out of the global economic recovery this year, with the greatest impact in Europe. This according to economists. 
a spike in oil prices to more than 110 US dollars per barrel, and renewed supply chain disruptions, including fresh headaches for the auto industry, are also likely to aggravate US inflation, already at a 40 year high. Over the last week, the sanctions against Russia continued to pour in, and this past Saturday, the International Monetary Fund warned that the war and rapidly accumulating sanctions on Russia would have a severe impact on the global economy. For PTV News Watch, I'm Delana Isles. Don't touch that remote, we'll be right back. Coming up next is your weather forecast. This is a reminder that all PTV service accounts are due on the first day of each month. Accounts should be brought up to date by the 28th of the month to avoid disruption in service. Payments may be made on our office at Stubbs Diamond Plaza Providenciales, Midis Plaza North Caicos, and Airport Road in South Caicos. Payments may also be made online using Scotiabank, CIBC First Caribbean Bank, and Royal Bank of Canada. Please allow three business day for online payments to be processed. We thank you for your cooperation. Welcome back to Newswatch. Here's the latest in your weather forecast. Here's your weather forecast for March 8, 2022. For the nation's capital, Grand Turk, on Tuesday, mostly sunny skies, high 80, low 75, winds east at 20 to 30 miles per hour. For South Cake is on Tuesday, mostly sunny skies, high 80, low 75, winds east at 15 to 25 miles per hour. For North and Middle Cake is on Tuesday, mostly sunny skies, high 81, low 75, winds east at 15 to 25 miles per hour. For Parrot and Pine Key on Tuesday, Mostly sunny skies, high 81, low 76, winds east at 15 to 25 miles per hour. And on Providenciales on Tuesday, mostly sunny skies, high 81, low 76, winds east at 15 to 25 miles per hour. Now for your sunrise and sunset, sunrise 6.05 a.m., sunset 5.57 p.m. And for your high tides and low tides, high tides 11.33 a.m., 11.33 p.m., and low tides 5.38 a.m., 5:35 p.m. And that's it for your weather forecast. We'll be right back with more news watch. Here at People's Television, we're more than just your leading news and entertainment services. We are spreading the gospel. We are breaking barriers. We are preserving the culture. Each one, teach one. We are committed to excellence. We're creating change. We are creating memories. We are the future! I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. I am PTV. We are PTV. We are PTV! We are, PTV. We are, PTV. We are continuing the legacy. We are PTV. Welcome back to News Watch. Operation Rejuvenation has officially commenced as Member of Parliament for ED7, Honorable Samuel E. Bean, and Minister of Health, Honorable Jamel Robinson, joined for the removal of vehicles in the Duckyard area. Here's more. The removal of derelict vehicles from District ED7 has begun and been dubbed as Operation Rejuvenation. The operation began on Saturday, March 5th in the Q-Town area, with over 152 vehicles being marked for removal. This is the start of our cleanup campaign in ED7. 
long promise, one of the first issues that we addressed during our campaign. And we are happy that with the help of Mr. Kenrick Neely and the resources of Mr. Ralph from CBMS and Mr. Smith from AJ's Trucking, it is finally here to fruition. And we in ED7 is more than happy to have them and thankful that they are here to play such a role with us today. I'd like to thank the Progressive National Institute, our team for ED7 that work hard in order to bring this process to a start. Honorable Jamel Robinson, Minister of Health, was also present at the site along with the president of CBMS and AJ Trucking Services and the police force. This right here is what is a very great community initiative spearheaded by Honorable Samuel Bean and his team, the Progressive National Institute for ED7, because we need to have more corporate citizenship and CBMS and AJ Trucking has definitely demonstrated that. Also here with us today are the Royal Turks and Caicos Police Force who are ensuring that you know things go smoothly and that there's no hiccups while we continue to beautify ED7 and the Turks and Caicos by extension. So from the Ministry of Health, we definitely are supportive and special shout out to Mr. Kendrick Neely from the Environmental Health Department for assisting. And that's what we're here for. We're a government for the people, by the people. Honorable Bean said that objectively, their goal with the first operation rejuvenation was to remove 150 cars. We are going to attempt to move at least 150 cars for the start. And hopefully we can um, continue with government as our main partner this time and complete our cleanup. I would also like to mention that Right in the back of us here where the cleanup is going on, this land is per, uh, belong to Mr. Tomlinson Skibbings. And I'm proud to say that he have kindly donated this land to us as ED7, where we're gonna be putting in a nice football field to keep our young people together and out of trouble. Following the announcement of plans for a new football field, Honorable Bean also revealed the second initiative he and his team are working on to implement garbage bins in the respective areas to further promote the cleanliness and beautification of our communities. We have a second initiative where we are placing um, lovely garbage bins all around Qtan mm -hmm. and, and the Glass Shack area that would assist and collecting of all the, the garbage. Mr. AJ has committed to us that he will ensure that it's maintained and always clean. So I'm proud and happy for that also. Also sharing the exciting and positive feedback he's been getting from community members, Honorable Bean shared that he hopes to involve them in the progression of Operation Rejuvenation, where they can play a bigger part in improving their homes. Oh, I'm pleased with the community. They love it. They all come out and rejoice because it's going on and they all want to help and play a part. So I'm hoping that as we go on with the cleaning, we can get them to assist and to be a part of it. Eunice Morris, the Corporate Affairs Liaison Manager for ED7, gave Newswatch an insight to the Progressive National Institute and what it's all about. The Progressive National Institute is a community organization. It was formed to assist um, not only ED7, but we are a part of the ED, ED7, but to assist in any way we can to alleviate the stress and be a community activist, to assist in cleaning, keeping the community clean. And you asked Honorable Bain about the ongoing um, projects. We have a donation drive going on right now where we're seeking um, donations from corporate uh, providenciales to purchase a bin. And when they purchase that bin, their logo goes on that bin. Those bins will be placed throughout the community, advertising them as good corporate citizens. And the entire thing is to keep our environment clean. When, when you have a clean environment, the, breed, the air is better for us all, 
Um, you, you're a happier person because of it. You're a happy and healthy person. So the Progressive National Institute is a nonprofit organization within the Turks and Caicos doing good, doing the greater good for all concerned. Honorable Bean closed off with promising a beautiful by nature and clean Q-Town community with the hopeful success of Operation Rejuvenation. That brings us to the end of this edition of The Real News. I hate to leave you so soon, but of course, you can join us right back here every weekday at 6.30 p.m. and tap into our social media platforms at www.ptv8tci.com. I'm Erica Pinales, keeping you informed, updated, and affiliated. Until next time.